So did Don't Be a Menace come after Martin? Yeah, Don't Be a Menace. Uh, Mar- with my first TV acting job was Martin. I guest starred on it as well. The episode with Gary Coleman where I played a fake Martin. All right. And then the movie, um, Don't Be a Menace, South Central Rodriguez and Juice in the Hood, I actually had to pay to be in that damn movie. Because I had done some, I had done um, back, I had done stand-in work for my brother in Tales in the Hood. So now I was SAG eligible. So now I got to join the union. And back then it was like $1,000 to join the union. So when I did, when I booked Don't Be a Menace to South Central where I drink your juice in the hood, I was, I was, I had to, I was a must join. And I was only getting paid $500. So in order to do the movie, I had to pay the $1,000 to make $500. So I actually say I paid to be in the damn movie, actually. And that was my first you know, big screen debut was, was uh, thanks, shout out to the Wayans, man. You know, Keenan and Damon and Sean and Marlon. Yeah, I mean, that movie was so interesting because it basically took all the the hood, yeah. you know, the classic hood and films. Spoofed, it. spoofed all the classic. All of them. You, you know. know, drama, action, comedy, and just kind of like a gumbo full of just, you know, black movies in one movie. It was genius. And what they started, franchise they started. Oh, yeah. And the way they kind of took all the movie names yeah. and combined them yeah. into one big-ass <laughs> title. So they took <laughs> Men of Society, Juice, South Central. South Central. Right. And and just basically like a Snoop Dogg <laughs> song, you know, Gin and Juice. together. You know, like drinking your juice in the hood. It's like <laughs> crazy. But genius, 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 though. Yeah, I mean, you still see like the meme with, you know... Uh, is it Marlon Wayans yeah. with, the, with the missile? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. do we with have the, a with problem? The, with, with the braids, the crazy braids, <laughs> which looked like he was almost uh, spoofing um, um, Lorenz Tate. Lorenz Tate. Yeah. Exactly. From Menace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, I've even interviewed um, Bill Duke. Who, Bill Duke is intense. Who, who basically stole that film yeah. <laughs> with his part. Yeah. <laughs> like his little five minute, you know, two, three minute you know part. You fucked up, right? Uh, you know, you, no, 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 no. You know, you done fucked up, right? <laughs> <laughs> but but see he's another guy who trained actor and like man when you get actors like that man who just do very little but very impactful those are the guys you study those are the guys you know you you uh and that's and that's been my thing man it's like i've been able to work with such amazing actors that i just watch and study and then on a set of martin when i was a pa you know i would study uh what martin would do and what tommy ford would do and carl Payne would do and 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 um, Tisha Campbell and and um, Tashina Arnold, man, and and they were able to just take what was on the page, man, and and make it and just make it sing. And it's like those words on the page are are, are something different in everybody else's mouth. And the way yeah. they added the flavor to it was really my training ground for acting, being just being a sponge and always being observant, man. And that you know I learned that very early in my in my career. Well, you do Don't Be a Menace. Yep. And then, well, I guess Sunset Park was probably around Sunset the same Park time. Was a little after that, yeah. 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 Then, Back in Business. Uh, Back in Business was a role, it was like a, a movie. The first time I worked with my brother, actually, in, in a set, it was um, it was uh, uh, Brian Bosworth. Brian Bosworth. Mm-hmm. It was my brother, and it was Michael Clark Duncan who played the security guy in that. And I, it's, it was crazy because he was security at one of the clubs I used to go to. Not comedy clubs, but like dance clubs. He used to always let me go up to VIP even though I didn't have proper credentials. But he's always cool and, and he was always a nice guy. So to see him, when he blew up, I was like, man, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Yeah, when he did the Green Mile, yeah. it, was, it was over. You know, I mean, he also did Friday and stuff like that. Yeah. But the Green Mile is what really is what, is what Is what blew him up. Blew him Cross up. him over. But that's what black actors want to do, man, is be able to cross over into mainstream without selling their soul or their whole, um, without cooning. You know, and, and it's like, okay, if I can cross over and still, you know, keep my morals and, and, and scruples intact, then cool. You know, and, and that movie did that for him. Well, yeah, I mean, you're co-starring with Tom Hanks, who has how many Oscars now? I man, mean... <laughs> incredible. Another, another guy that's just like, you, those guys you just sit and study, man, and, and watch what they do. And you still a little bit from them. Still is okay in acting. It's not cool in comedy. But in acting, you can steal a little bit from from people that you admire. Well, then you had one eight seven. Yeah, that was Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson, another guy who just another you great. Know, you just sit and observe and, and watch him work. 
Yeah, a couple of couple of lines in that. Yep. Let me ad lib a little bit. I love when they let me ad lib. You know. Then you did ride. Yes. With Malik Yoba. Malik Yoba, who we, Cedric the Entertainer, who yep. who, I, who I grew up watching. You know, being from St. Louis. You know, uh, John Witherspoon, who's you know another who's who's a, who was a, a trained actor as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, and comedian as well. Yeah, and comedian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. So so yeah, man, that that movie was fun because the um, director was from St. Louis, Millicent Shelton. Mm -hmm. The the producers, the Helen Brothers, were from East St. Louis, St. Louis. So it was a lot of love, you know, on that set. Malik Yoba was different to work with. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I don't pull any punches. What do you mean by different? He 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 was he was not pleasant on the set. I just interviewed him. Okay. Uh, the interview got a little awkward at times. Cause yeah, <laughs> yeah, got a little awkward. Malik Yoba loves him some Malik Yoba. I'm gonna tell you right there, right there in there. <laughs> hey, look, I I I'm I'm as real as they fucking come and I'm unfiltered. Well, well, you know something when you talk about, you know, getting to a certain place without during doing certain types of roles, me and Malik actually had a whole conversation about that. So for example. You know, I interviewed other actors, like let's say, you know, Lord Jamar, who's a regular guest on Vlad mm -hmm. TV, you know, who's done Oz and, and so forth and, and other films. And like Michael Jai White, mm -hmm. another one who's done a lot of films. Yeah. They both said they wouldn't wear a dress. Have you ever asked, you know, ever had a role where you were going to dress like a, you know, dress like a woman in that role? Had you accepted it? No, I, it was it was a part of a comedy. Uh, I was doing a, um, a sitcom and... It was just a quick suggestion. I was like, oh, "Can't I'm, I'm not doing that." And it, oh, okay, cool. It was. Just, it was not. <laughs> that, that was it, was but it was not that, yeah. no conspiratorial type of thing like that. Okay. My manager knows. Don't even send me in for no shit that involves something that I'm not morally comfortable with. Right. They wouldn't play a gay character. Right. That's just. It's just not them. Right. Malik Yoba, no problem. He He's done, you know, he does a play right. where he wears dresses. He right. actually said he wants to wear a dress so he could push his artistic boundaries. Hey, it's different stroke for different folks. I don't play those characters well. I'm not, I, I love acting, and there's some things that's not in your wheelhouse. I don't play a stoned, hardcore gangster very well. So yeah. there's roles I don't take like mm -hmm. that. So if I don't, if I can't sell it, I'm not going to do it. I mean, and we talked about you know, some of the conspiracy theories yeah. of, you know, demasculating, oh, demasculating black, black men, men so want to see him in a dress or want to see yeah. him in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a homosexual role or whatever. Hey, it's, it's whatever you feel like you can bring to that character and you can make, you can sell it, by all means, do you. I know what certain roles I, I can't sell. I can't, I can't, I, I, I wish I had some, some of those skills, but I just don't. So why even waste my time? And the thing about it is, it's like there's a lot of talented actors who are homosexual who can play those roles and and be well with it. You know why not? You know yeah, just give it give it to guy. them. Yeah, exactly. And then you don't have the whole problem. And you know it's just it's just it's that in the black community, especially in the Hollywood community, there's that that underlying you know in the back of our head that we have like you know. Uh, my dad, I know when I moved to L.A., my dad was like, don't go out there, put on no dress. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, my dad was strict, man, drill sergeant. So he's like, okay, okay, Pop, I won't, <laughs> you know. So I don't know if that's like stuck in my head, you know, because things that you learn as a kid and things that are just drilled in your head, they stick forever. I don't care how old you get. Well, Wesley Snipes wore a dress. Yeah, and, wore, and, and played it well. Wesley, I mean, he's as masculine as they come. They, yeah. You know, so... Like I say, it's to each his own. I don't right. knock anybody for doing it. If that's you, do you. Right, but it was also like a group of top actors all right. wearing dresses together. Right. Like, wasn't Patrick Swayze in it, you know, yeah. like the Wong Fu and so forth? Two, two Wong Fu. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it was uh, Ving Rhames, I think. Was it Ving Ving Rhames, Rhames yeah. I think, was another one yeah. who wore a dress. Yeah, I remember Wesley's <laughs> like coming to one of my comedy shows, the Comedy Store, Fat Tuesdays, the greatest night in the history of comedy. And he was sitting there, a little Asian girl, and I said, and I always liked the Joan on the... You know, throw hots and jokes at this. I don't care how big you are. If, if I'm on stage and you're in the audience, I'm coming at you. Right. And I was like, um, I was like, man, he had an Asian girl sitting next to him. I said, my, thanks, man. I love you in Tu Wong Fu. And you got Fu sitting next to you. And the place just crap. <laughs> he was always, he, I'm glad he could take a joke because he'd whip my ass. 
Yeah, yeah. I heard In a whoop, dress. I heard Wesley can whoop some ass. Oh yeah, yeah. He can party too. Yep. Wes, a hey, Wesley know how to party. Right, and also not pays taxes. So <laughs> I, I understand that. Though. It's another conspiracy, but we won't talk about that. <laughs>